First John chapter 4 verse 1 it says beloved believe not every spirit but try the spirits whether they are of the most high because many false prophets are gone out into the world man call loyam la yahweh shem yahweh man many false prophets have gone out into the world man and um you know i think most of you brothers just have seen these christian preachers they had that counsel on the hebrew israelites all right and also also addressing seed of israel man who's another false prophet um i've seen his video where he tried to counter or refute what the brother said and he asked him certain questions they were going back and forth he did another video and um you know that guy he just you know he showed his face this time but he's proving and showing that he's a false prophet man because what you're saying is not scripture that's what scripture says let me read it again it says believe not every spirit so just because he say he an israelite right or even if he knows the names you have to try their spirit by the spirit by the word see if the two align if it don't he's a false prophet he wasn't sent by Yahweh Bashem Yahshua, man. Okay? Read a two. Um, another before I answer his question. Jeremiah 23. And this is why the Most High said this about his people, man. He said, Woe unto you pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastors, save Yahweh Bashem Yahshua. The Most High said, Woe unto you, destruction unto y'all, man. Okay? Because y'all in the leadership position. You're supposed to be leading Jake the right way, but what? Y'all not, man. Okay? You have my people drunk with the wine of Babylon, with that plantation Christianity, man. Okay? That's why the Most High said, verse 31, he said, Behold, I'm against the prophets, save Yahweh Bashim Shah, that use their tongues and say, if Behold, I'm against them that prophesy false dream Savior Habashim El Shah and do tell them and cause my e my people to err by their lies and their likeness yet I sent them not nor commanded them therefore they shall not profit this people at all Savior Habashim El Shah okay like Martin Lucifer King man with his false dreams man and a lot of you pastors with your America because that's what you're telling Jake with this prosperity doctrine Okay, to attain the American dream, the Most High said He didn't send you. Seed of Israel, the Most High, Al Bashim Al Shah, He didn't send you either, man. That's why I'm before I answer this question, let me read this one precept. First Timothy chapter one verse four. Okay, it says, First Timothy one four. Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies. Which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is a faith and do so. Let me see. Let me jump on down. Verse 6. Desire to be teachers of the law, like him, neither understanding what they say, nor wherever they affirm. Okay? So they does he desires to be a teacher, but he don't understand what he's saying, man. And according to the law, you are who your fathers are. He's talking about he has that debunk and that's leading our people down what are you talking about bro man and then he couldn't answer the question i seen it he could not refute the brother quoted how was he from manasseh israelites and their mom was an egyptian and he said it in the video his exact words you can't use that because that was before the law was given really really which the law was written at that stone at that point but the law was handed down orally from generation to generation. Because if that's the case, if Joseph didn't know any law, then how come he didn't commit adultery with Pharaoh's wife? Because that was against the law. And he refused to do that, man. Okay. Cain killed his brother Abel. Abel gave a righteous sacrifice, a blood sacrifice, man. You're going into the story of Onan and Ur. Okay, um, I think it was Genesis the 37th chapter. Let me see if I, I can get that real quick. That's also in the law, man. 
if your brother died, you're supposed to rain up seed unto, for him, right? To keep that bloodline going. Okay. And I think it was, uh, let me see, Genesis 25. Hmm. I think it's Genesis 38. Let me see. Genesis 38. Here we go. Yeah. All right. It says, And Judah saw there was a daughter of a certain Canaanite whose name was Shuda, and he took her and went in unto her, and she conceived. Oh my gosh. So Judah, okay. All right. He saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite. And she and his name was called Ur. So what was Ur? Was he a um, was he mixed seed? And she conceived again and bare son, and she called his name Onan. Was he mixed seed, man? Wow. These guys are unbelievable, man. Alright, and then when you read the law, this is the law, and Judah said unto Onan, because the Lord had killed his brother Ur. So Judah said unto Onan, Go in unto thy brother's wife, and marry her, and raise up seed to thy brother. And Onan knew that the seed should not be his, and it came to pass when he went to his brother's wife that he spilled the seed on the ground. Alright? So he purposely he ejaculated on the ground, because he didn't want to raise up seed for his brother. Okay, and the Lord what? The Lord killed him, man. But that's also in the law. That's also, this is before Moses came on the scene. That was, that was also in the law. All right. You can read that in Deuteronomy chapter 25. Verse 5. It says, If brethren dwell together and one of them die and have no child, the wife of the dead shall not marry without unto a stranger. Her husband's brother, Deuteronomy 25 and 5, shall go in unto her and take her to him to wife and perform the duty of an husband's brother unto her. See, just like in Genesis 38, that's in the law. So they were keeping the law. All right. Before Moses came on the scene, it's just that in totality, when Moses came on the scene, you know, most of the other laws came and also they were written on stone this time. All right. But they were practicing parts of the law before Moses came. man. so that's another lie that you said, man. That's another lie, man. All right. That's why the most high said this. Give me Jeremiah chapter 5. I'm not going to do nothing long. I just had to adjust this real quick. You know, and you know, we've been the hottest topic for the long time. Concentrating on these Christians now. They've been looking at our videos, man. Been. Okay. That's why they're coming around the camps and they trying to engage because they're trying to learn. And all their videos are, how do you counter them? How do you counter them? How do you deal with the issue? They're not the only one. All the Christian ministers have been saying the same thing because y'all been getting cut, man. Even these other camps that have been going off just been cutting you guys, man. Cut, 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 and just cut, man. Okay? And you don't got it. Y'all went to theologian school, your pastors and your bishops, and they don't know the Bible at all, man. Okay? The most I said he was going to confound the wise by the foolishness of preaching man and he's confounded you with all your seminary right your cemetery degrees okay because you guys are dead you're spiritually dead okay with your your uh, your, <laughs> your three-piece suit and your tie man the most high is not dealing with y'all man unless y'all humble down and repent okay like you have david lib coming around now so a lot of these dudes been watching and like the dude said in the video let me get this for Jeremiah 5.28. Jeremiah 5.31. It says, The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it so. And what will he do in the end thereof? That's what most eyes asking you, man. What you guys gonna do, man, when Jacob's trouble hit, when the economy collapsed, man? Is your Jesus gonna save you then? Hmm? All of the prosperity and the money that y'all been teaching for years, years upon years, man, teaching this prosperity bullshit. Okay? 
teach in that game is godliness when the scripture tells you otherwise, man. But now the true spirit of the Mashiach is on the planet Earth from the elders, the apostles on down, and y'all losing money. And this is why y'all trying to come up with different strategies on how to attract people to come back to the church. But that's dead. That's dead, man. All right? The Most High is not dealing with that, man. Like we said, there's two worlds Jake is going into. Is either they going into witchcraft and sorcery or they, they fuck known that they're Israelites, man. Nobody's joining that Christianity church no more. That's played out. That's long and gone. All right? Because it's not rooted in Yahweh Shai. The foundation wasn't built on the Mashiach. That's what I doctrine has now fallen, man. And y'all still trying to hold on to it. <laughs> That's why Stephen said this. Acts chapter 7, verse 55. It says this. I think it's 55. I think. He says... Yeah, Acts 751. This is Stephen said to our people when he went through the whole history. Curse the ass out. He said, Ye stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart or your mind or your spirit. Because that's what repentance is. And ears, ye do always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have your fathers persecuted? Have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one. Of whom ye have been now betrayers and murderers. You see that? Who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. They didn't keep it back in the past. And they back in a lot again, these wicked preachers, man, who teach for reward and gain. Okay? They don't I'm gonna read that precept in Isaiah the first chapter. You see? So Stephen told them, You guys always resist the Holy Spirit, man. The spirit of the most high, man. And that's how y'all gonna be destroyed, man. And seed of Israel, like I said with you, before I read Isaiah the first chapter, you talking about the law wasn't administered or given. You err not know the scriptures, man. You err not knowing the scriptures. Because why would the most high judge the planet earth and flood it if there was no law? What was he judging mankind then? Hmm? How would the scripture say Noah was just if there was no law? How was Enoch walking perfectly if there was no law, man? What in the world are you talking about, man? Matter of fact, let me read that in the precept and apocrypha, then I'm going to jump back and finish off Isaiah, the first chapter. Right? It says, Noah, it says, Sirach chapter 44, verse 17. It says, Noah was found perfect and righteous. How? If there's no law. In the time of wrath, he was taken in exchange for the world. Therefore was he left as a remnant unto the earth when the flood came. So how was he perfect and righteous if there was no law? And why would the Most High judge the planet Earth? Flood it. Kill all those people except for those eight if there was no law, man. So the law is handed down orally. Okay, but you earn not know the scriptures. Know the power of the Most High. All right. We get Isaiah the first chapter. I'm going to close it out with this. Isaiah 123 says, Thy princes are rebellious and companions of thieves. Everyone loveth gifts, man. And that's these preachers today. Scripture call you dumb dogs. And followed after rewards. They judge not the fatherless. They don't care about our people, man. It's all about filling their pockets, man. All right? So they can have their own private jets. Like Creflo used to say. Your own private jets, man. Luxury cars, mansions. You see, they have ATMs all in the church. Bunch of wicked ass niggas, man. All right? Scripture said, everyone loveth gifts and followed after rewards. They judge not the fatherless. Neither do the cause of the widow cometh unto them. So, the Christian church hasn't taken a positive stance, a strong stance on anything. You have Vanessa out here. They took no strong stance. They tell you to take it. You got this LGBTQP community. 
they don't take no stance against it. They don't take no stance against Babylon. You just been getting gunned down, shot, this, then, the third. All these preachers, they preach for reward, man. They need politicians in the government back pocket. That's why they underneath the charter. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yashav, host, the mighty one of Israel. Ah, I will ease me of mine adversary and avenge me of my enemies. And I'll turn my head upon thee and pur purely purge away thy dross and take away all thy tin. How? By getting rid of the leadership, man. And he said, What? And I'll restore thy judges as at the first, and thy counselors as at the beginning. Afterward, thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. That's what most sides do right now with his elect, the house of David. The true judges that will judge the fatherless and the widow, man. All right. Give a liberty to them that are bound, man. And you pass as you see in this mighty work happen. All right. You see it. You see a lot of Jacob starting to wake up and take hold to the doctrine because that is the fulfillment of prophecy in Ezekiel the 37th chapter. And y'all can't stop it, man. Right. Like that guy foolishly said. He said the Israelites, what they're saying is not true. However, we can't counter it. What are you talking about? We not speaking the truth, but you can't counter it and you have it. That doesn't make any sense. Yahweh Shai said it best in Luke 21, 15. He said, I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which none of your adversaries may neither gainsay nor resist. And we have that mouth through the power of Yahweh Shemel Shah. And the world is starting to witness and see that, man. And that's a beautiful thing, man. All these strongholds and these wicked, um, these doctrines is being cast down through the power and might of Yahweh Bashim Yal Shah, man. Because this truth is also known as the sword of truth, man. Okay? It's cutting through everything. Everything that's not written will get cast down. All right? So that must say, call him Lai Yahweh Bashim Yal Shah. Shalom.